NED Framework Core is becoming more performant with every new version that is released. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can apply a rarely used EF Core feature to make your queries run even faster. I'm talking about compiled queries and I'm going to show you how you can use compiled queries and we're going to run some benchmarks to see how much of a performance improvement we can get from using compiled queries. We're starting out with a database context that has only one entity, which is the customer. The customer has an ID, a name, and an age in terms of properties, which are going to be translated to columns in the database. We're seeding 10,000 random customers as our test set for running the benchmarks. And as the database, we're using Microsoft SQL Server. So let's create our first test method that is going to be our baseline for comparing it to compiled queries. I'm going to add a method for fetching the customer by the ID. So I'm going to call it get customer by ID. And it's going to have one argument, which is going to be the ID of the customer. And let's write a typical synchronous query using entity framework. I'm going to get the customer's I queryable by calling set of customer. And let's chain a call to first or default and define a simple expression for fetching a customer by the ID. So this is our normal baseline version for getting a customer by the ID. And now let's see how we can define a compiled query to achieve the same result of getting a customer by the ID. So I'm going to create a private static read-only field that is going to contain our compiled query for getting a customer by the ID. What are the arguments that we need for our compiled query? We need to specify which database context is going to be used for the query. And then we need to specify any additional arguments that we want to pass to our query. And in this case, this is going to be the ID of the customer, which is a long. And then we need to specify the return type for our query, which is a nullable customer instance. Let's give it the name of get by ID. And let's see how we can define our compiled query. We're going to use the EF class available in NAD Framework, which exposes a set of static methods that allow us to gain access to some advanced NAD Framework features. One of those features is compiled queries. So I'm going to say EF compiled query, and now we need to give it an expression that is going to represent the query that we want to compile. So we want to write an expression for fetching a customer by the ID. Our expression is going to need a database context and the ID of the customer. So I'm going to say app DB context and give it a name of context. And we need to define our ID. And with this in place, we can write our expression. So I'm going to say context set of customer to get the customers like variable. And let's say first or default and just define a filter to fetch the customer by the ID. So this is how we can define a compiled query to fetch the customer by the ID. Let's add a new method that is going to use this compiled query. So it's going to return a nullable customer. Let's call it get customer by ID compiled. And it needs to have an ID argument. And how we would use it is we just call the get by ID function. For the DB context, we are going to specify the current DB context instance, which is accessed by calling this and we just pass the ID as the second argument. So now you can see the typical query using NAD framework side by side with the compiled query version. And one thing that we can conclude is that the compiled query version requires us to write a lot more code to achieve even the simplest query like this one, which is just filtering an entity by the ID. So let's see if this is justified by the performance improvement of using compiled queries. I'll head over to the benchmark class and let's write the benchmarks for testing our baseline and compiled query versions. So I'm going to add a method that returns a customer and let's call it get customer by ID. We're going to instantiate a new database context by just calling the default constructor on the app DB context class. And we can return DB context and call the get customer by ID method. I'm going to add a constant inside of the benchmark class that is going to represent the customer ID. And let's give it a value of 7,000, for example. And let's pass the customer ID to our method. And let's also make it a benchmark method. We're going to do the same for the compiled version. So we're going to call the get customer by ID compiled. 
and let's rename our benchmark. And now we're going to run our benchmark and let's discuss the results in just a moment. The results are in and we can see that the compiled version of the same query is about 30 microseconds faster, which is slightly more than 10% in this example. So we can definitely conclude that the compiled query version is faster. You just have to decide if this performance improvement is significant enough to justify the increase in complexity by introducing compiled queries to your application. So we've seen the benchmark results and we know that the compiled query version is faster, but why is that the case? How a typical EF core query runs is the first time a specific query is executed, it gets compiled and then the compiled version of that query is cached so that it can be reused throughout the lifetime of your application. When we are using compiled queries, we get the compiled version of the query right away and we skip the runtime compilation and caching of that query. And this allows us to access some additional performance improvements under the hood, which is implemented in the EF library. So this is the explanation for why the compiled version is faster. And now let's see a few more examples. I want to test how this behaves when we add no tracking queries into the mix. So I'm going to slightly change these methods. This one is going to become get customer by ID no tracking. And this one is going to be get customer by ID no tracking compiled. And I need to slightly alter the implementation. So this is going to be as no tracking. And I need to add another compiled query that is going to get our customer by the ID, except it's going to be a no tracking query. So I'm going to give it a name of get by ID no tracking and we change the implementation here to call as no tracking. And now let's use our compiled version in the method here. And with this in place, we can run our benchmark again for these two methods and let's discuss the results in just a moment. So we have our results and again, the compiled query version is faster than the normal version. You can see that this time the performance is slightly better than the previous example because we are using no tracking queries, which does not add the loaded entities into EF's change tracker, allowing us to gain improved performance. If you are liking this video about compiled queries, make sure that you smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the awesome videos that I have in the making. So far, I've showed you some simple queries where we were just filtering a single entity by the ID. So I want to show you a more involved example, and we're going to be filtering on the customer by both the name and the age, and we're going to spice it up a little by making these queries asynchronous. So let's write the normal version with EF core. So this is going to be an asynchronous query returning a customer and let's call it get customer by name and age. I'm also going to give it async at the end of the method to follow the convention. And it's going to have two arguments for the name and the age of the customer. And let's write our query. So we're going to await the set of customer to obtain our iQueryable of customer. And let's write first our default async and just write our expression. So the name has to be equal to the name that we specify as the argument and also the age. So this is the normal version that you would write using EF core. Let's see how we would convert this into a compiled query that is asynchronous at the same time. So let's go back here. I'm going to reuse this part here and the rest is going to be slightly different. So instead of a long as an argument, we have a string for the name and an integer for the age of the customer. And we are no longer returning a nullable customer because this is asynchronous, we're returning a task of nullable customer. And let's give it the name of get by name and age. And let's see how we can define a compiled query that is asynchronous. So we're going to use the EF class again, and notice that we have a compile async query method. And this is what we're going to use to define our asynchronous compiled query. So we need to give it an expression that is going to compile and we need to start out by defining our application DB context and the name and age arguments. So string for name and integer for age. And how do we write our query? 
So you might be slightly surprised by what I'm going to do, but we're just going to say context set of customer and we can say first or default and we need to write a filter to fetch the customer with the given name and the given age and this is all that we need to do to define a compiled query that is asynchronous what's going to happen now is ef is going to take this query for fetching the customer by the name and the age and it's going to convert it into an asynchronous compiled query that we can now await. So how we would use it is down here. Let's create a compiled version of the get customer by name and age method. So this is going to be get customer by name and age compiled async. And we're just going to await our compiled query, which is get customer by name and age. We pass in the DB context, the name and the age as the arguments. So these two versions are functionally the same, but let's see how they behave in terms of performance when we run our benchmarks. So here are the results for our benchmark. And again, the compiled query version is faster than the normal version. And this time the performance difference is not as significant as in the previous example. Now we're down to maybe a 5% performance difference which is still something if you need to squeeze out the added performance. But again, the complexity is significantly increased as opposed to the normal version. I think that compiled queries are an excellent EF core feature that we should definitely consider if we need to squeeze out that last little bit of performance out of our application. But you have to ask yourself if this is justified with the added complexity of using compiled queries and I will also even consider if I can just write a SQL query that is going to be more performant and simpler to maintain than a complicated compiled query. So this is just something to have in mind while you wait for me to release a new video. In the meantime, you can watch the two videos that you can see on the screen right now. And until next time, stay awesome.